that way. So where did you live when uh, who? Sherry had her tragedy? Where were you living? When Sherry got burned? Yeah. Where you living? We lived in Turkey City. Okay. Up on the hill, way up in the top. Well, there, there was plateaus up the hill. We were about the second or third plateau up the side of the hill. Uh, in a million years ago, there was a mountain. This is all that was left of the mountain. We still made a nice walk up and down the hill. And she, and well, Rosa was a baby. She was a, not quite a toddler. I think she could walk, but she wouldn't walk much. And Sherry was kind of looking out for her. Mother hadn't gotten up yet, and the stove was burning to heat the house. What, what kind? A coal stove? A coal stove. Okay. And that's all we had to burn was coal. I have a story about that, too. And when she walked by, the draft from the snow from the stove, no girls didn't wear long pants and they wore skirts. And it grabbed her skirt, the fire sucked her skirt in and it caught fire and she started to run. My brother David tried to grab her, he did, but he got his hands burned, she got away from him. And before she was through, she was severely burned her torso from under her arms down to just above her knees. And my memory is of her pacing the floor and screaming and my mother she had put a sheet around her, got the burned dress off her and put a sheet around her. Her mother was wringing her hands and pacing the floor behind her and we didn't have a phone. So one of my brothers ran down the hill to a neighbor and called the doctor. And the doctor came over to about five miles away, at least five miles away. And this is that part I remember, but I, I wasn't, didn't remember what the doctor said. Maybe he didn't say it to me, but he said, there's no use in sending her to the hospital. She's not going to live three days. And so they didn't send her to a hospital. The nearest hospital was close to 30 miles away. They didn't have ambulances in our area. You'd have to bring one from Oil City, I think together and then take her back to the hospital. And he said she won't live long enough. So and my dad and my brothers were all up in Forest County hunting when this happened. The only one the only brother home was David. I think he was still too young to hunt. Or he just couldn't take them all. So when he came home, he said, Bobby got the, shot a big deer with a, I think a 12 pointer. Who did? Okay. Didn't want anybody to tell my sister for fear. They were all excited. And I thought, Who got the 12 pointer? Bob. Who? My brother Bob. Oh, okay. Your uncle Bob. Good. Okay. And the, Eventually, after a couple of days, they took her to a hospital in Oil City, and she was there for weeks and weeks. I'm not sure how long, and she wasn't getting any better. And I used to, I, I really went up to see her a couple of times. And they had a metal thing over her, and the blankets on the metal thing, because she couldn't stand to have any blankets touching her. That's what I remembered most. And people were very kind. They came and they brought presents for her. And the Girl Scouts troop adopted her as their what, mascot. And they, they would come to see her. And the troop leader would come to see her every day. And they tried their best to help her uh, emotionally. And finally, somehow, I think Dad and Mother arranged to move her 
out of Oil City to Kane Hospital, where my uncle's brother was a head surgeon there. And he took her, uh, Jerry is his patient, and he doctored her for another year and a half. And Who did? My, he would have been my uncle's brother, Aunt Mabel, mother's sister, it was Aunt Mabel's husband's brother. He was, he was a, whatever the top title was when the guy that was the head poncho at the Kane Hospital. And she was his patient for the whole time. And they slowly but surely, she started to get better. And they grafted a lot of skin, took skin off her thighs where she hadn't been burned and got infected. And they had a hard time clearing it up. Eventually, she came home. They told her she wouldn't be walk, able to walk again. She was in the hospital for two years because her knees bent because she couldn't stand to straighten her legs and or the pull on the tissues. Mm. And they had her in a wheelchair. Uh, when she came home and they told her, you won't ever be able to walk. Uh, she was one of our relatives. She was Will's relative. And she was determined she was not going to spend her life sitting in a wheelchair. She didn't get any therapy. But she got herself walking. She just determined she was going to on her feet. And slowly and surely she did it. And by the time, maybe a year or so, she was walking.